Edmonton city, city and uh, numbers are going up crazy. So again, it's very important that we have to do our best at the end of the day by protecting our health, by caring our loved ones at the end of the day, because it's really important uh, that we do everything that we can. So everything uh, you need to know about COVID-19 in Alberta on Thursday, November the 26th. So today there are uh, there are 355 people in hospital, uh, 71 in ICU. Alberta Health plans uh, to make available more than uh, 2,000 accurate car beds and up to 400 ICU beds for patients with COVID-19 across the province in the coming weeks. Alberta's moving to online learning for students has received some mixed reviews from advocacy groups and school divisions. Eleven staff at Forefront Banff Spring Hotel have tested positive for the virus while another five have recovered. So cases were the result of transmission in community in and staff housing but not occur within the hotel. The town of Banff declared a local state of emergency on Wednesday night. AHS number indicated 153 active cases in Banff National Park region as Wednesday plan are in the work to set up new testing faculty in the mountain town. Uh, so I'm going to tell you the numbers that we have today. So, uh, so affected Wednesday AHS has uh, changed vision rules to accurate hospital outbreak and community that under inherence the changes are for patients to admit hospital and in ambulatory care, including emergency. So we're going to be talking about Alberta's cases. Uh, first of all, I want to be reading this because uh, it's very important that everybody knows what's happening. So, uh, since hospital numbers are key, let's start with those. On October the 28th, 130 people were in hospital due to COVID-19, including eight intensive care beds. On Wednesday, 335, uh, 355 people were in hospital due to COVID, including 71 in ICU. Next to can look at the cases numbers. On October the 28th, the province reported 477 new cases and a total of 4,900 and 21 active cases. On Wednesday, 1,265 new cases were identified and we had a total of 13,719 active cases. A regional breakdown of active cases numbers looks like this. On October the 28th, Calgary Zone has 1,875, 79 active cases. Wednesday, Calgary Zone has 5,028 active cases. On October the 28th, Edmonton Zone had 2,277 active cases. Wednesday, 6,280 and 268 active cases. On October the 28th, South Zone has 256 active cases. Wednesday, South Zone had 65, 65, 656 active cases. On October the 28th, North Zone has 325 active cases. Wednesday, North Zone had 805 active cases. October 28th, Central Zone has 162 active cases. Wednesday, Central Zone had 876 active cases. On October 28th, Unknown Zone had 20, 22 active cases. Wednesday, Unknown Zone had 86 active cases. Then, they're looking at the testing. October the 28th, Provincial Lab completed 12,153 tests and positivity rate was about 4%. On Wednesday, Provincial Labs completed 15,644 tests and positivity rate was 8.1%. What about continuing care centers where many of the most vulnerable people live? On October the 28th, there were 322 active cases and 1,350 recovered cases at continuing care faculty by 
that point 193 resident, residents of those faculties had died. This huge number when, uh, when we see it. On Wednesday, there were 522 active and 2,559 recovered cases at continuing care faculty. By that point, 314 residents of those faculties had died. And finally, the schools. On October the 28th, about 10% of schools had outbreak or were on alert with a total of 730 confirmed cases in those schools. By Wednesday, about 15% of schools had outbreak or were on alert with a total of 1,207 confirmed cases in those schools. By October the 28th, in school transmission had occurred in 87 schools. Of those, 48 had only one new case as a result. By Wednesday, in school transmission had occurred in 194 schools. Of those, 105 had only one new case as a result. On October the 28th, the provincial death total stood at 323. By Wednesday, the provincial death total had reached 500. So you can see the rise of those numbers are, are, are increasing either by death total or by uh, COVID numbers that are people are getting. People are dying like crazy in Alberta every single day. And we can see it every day that these numbers are not changing and they're going way up uh, as we expected. So at the end of the day, we have to do what's right by protecting our loved ones and making sure that uh, uh, we don't make, make sure that uh, we don't um, we don't uh, make uh, people sick in any way because uh, that's what matters at the end of the day. Um, um, so, um, moving on to COVID-19, it's very important that uh, every day people do their best as much as you, you can, uh, protecting your health, caring about the loved ones. That's what's really important because every day there is new results, there is new numbers that we have to deal with. And we have to make sure that we have to take care of those people as much as we can because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what we do. Uh, health and priority of the people, health and safety of the people is more important than anything, you know, right? So that's so that's what's really important. And hopefully uh, people understand what I'm talking about, not, not uh, hopefully people know what exactly what I'm talking about because we don't uh, care about uh, people's uh, uh, health and safety is a big problem. So hopefully that really makes sense uh, to all of you guys at the end of the day. And hopefully uh, uh, um, you guys uh, do your best as much as you can. Um, I don't want anybody to uh, uh, to joke around with their health in any way, right? Because your health at the end of the day, it matters as much as you can. Look, a lot of people can, uh, can make their health work or not work, but uh, we have to do our best at the end of the day as much as we can. And making sure that um, the health and the safety of the people is more important and uh, that's what matters because uh, some people don't know uh, what's, what's priority and what's not priority at all and if we do not know what's um, a priority is, is, is a big problem so hopefully that really makes sense uh, to all of you guys hopefully what you guys uh, um, uh, do your best and making sure that uh, um, everything uh, goes really well. Um, so it's very important that uh, you, you follow the health rules because if you don't have followed the health rules, please, uh, the government, what they announced on, on Friday or what they announced a couple of days ago, uh, it's not really a strict rules that we heard from the government at all, right? The government of Alberta. So um, we will see in the coming weeks what they say and what's their plan. But until then, it's very important that uh, they do their best as much as they can, right? You have to make sure that the COVID doesn't attack you in any way as much as you can. That's, that's, that's the agenda here and that's the message that we all need to understand because if we care about people's health at the end of the day, that's what really matters. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter uh, what, what the position will be or what, what you want to face. What matters is that your health and taking your health very seriously in every way, that's what's really important. And I'm expecting everybody to do that as much as they can, right? Um, today, I did say I'll announce new restrictions. 
for uh, for my school. So according to the government, they said until January 11th, they're gonna be doing lockdown. I'm gonna make it into further lockdown until uh, February or even March until we get the actual vaccine and until the numbers go down because until now we didn't see the numbers going down. So until the numbers go down, I'm gonna make it efficient that we're gonna be doing a lockdown until that time. Until the numbers go down, we will see, but it's very important that uh, health and safety of the people is more important. And I care about more about the health and safety of the people than the premier does because the premier, he just cares about his business at the end of the day. And that's what he sees more important. And that's what he gets more important of that saying the health and safety of the people. He sees it as if, as, as, as his business is more important to them now. Than that right because i don't understand why bars have to be open and casinos have to be open and things that should not even be open i don't even know why they have to be open these things automatically we should know that they should not be open in any way in any form and and he decided to leave those things open and make it a priority and the people get sick and, and people not getting well and that's and i don't see what that when the government does that they're benefiting anything from from that uh, uh, problem. They're not actually benefiting in anything. So it's very important that uh, um, I have to take the right step too. I'm making sure that we're gonna go until February uh, for my school. I don't care about other schools that they open in January, but my school we're gonna be opening maybe by mid February or even March until we see the numbers go on. I do not care if there's vaccine or no vaccine. It has to be safe enough for me to open again because as long as this 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 is a vaccine and still the numbers are super high. That's not going to make me open the place, or is it? So that's what, so that's something we're going to be open. We have to open it slowly until uh, until um, until you have uh, uh, until a uh, thing that's going to be open, right? Uh, it's very important. Uh, it's very important also to make sure because Monday uh, schools are going to be closing. So make sure that if you don't have a computer, you don't have a uh, a device, you don't have a laptop, you don't have a phone. You make sure that you come here and making sure that you come and pick them up. And if you're going to come here, you have to wear a mask. I'm not taking 10 people at one time. It's going to be one person at a time to come and take a computer or a laptop. But I, I, I'm hoping that everybody has a laptop and a computer and a working device so we don't have, nobody can be getting sick here. Nobody has to have COVID and nobody has to be uh, not being well because it's not even safe. If you have your own device, it's better. So you don't have to come to school and make everybody affected and everybody having to be sick. So that's what I suggest to do. If you don't have a device, then you have to come here and pick up device. You have until tomorrow to come. If you don't come tomorrow, you're not gonna be able to come next week. Next week, schools are closed. So so you have to uh, make it an emergency actually actually it's closed today it's closed tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow i'm going to start closing the school i'm not going to even wait till uh, uh monday even i'm going to close the day early because it's emergency update uh, uh emergency and this our health is at risk now and it's very important that uh, thing so i'm putting in a, a, a state of emergency for uh for my school uh starting friday november uh, the 27th 2020 so if you're planning actually to come and um and um, pick up the computer, you have to make it uh, today time. I don't know, around maybe 4.30 or or I don't know. I don't know when I'm gonna, maybe I'll mail it to you and deliver it to you and you can come and get it because I don't think anybody's willing to come after school and come in here with a mask, right? And I can't guarantee, um, I can't complete, could guarantee my school will be open. So uh, I'll mail it to you and I'll mail the computer or whatever device that you need that you're gonna be using, but I'm expecting majority of my class should have a computer. Not every single student is gonna tell me I don't have a device. That's not uh, that's not productive. You can't do your device on a phone. A phone is not acceptable for a device because when you're doing an assignment or you're doing your homework, uh, it will crash on you. So you need an actual device to work on and to do the work on. So you, so I can see what work you're doing, whatever you're doing, and I can see that because if you have so many windows and have a camera on. Uh, sometimes the camera might not work because you have so much window, you have so many, it happens to me sometimes. So for you guys, it's very important that you do have a computer, you have something that you can use as much as you can. So that's very important. Also, I want to say that I updated a Google Write, um, Google Docs. So when you're doing your homework, when you're doing things, uh, there's now Google Write. So that Google Write, uh, you can uh, use it on Google Docs. And um, 
it's updated for you so it can read it for you especially for your diploma in january we can do that i can make it into a google write and a google Docs so where you can make uh, the a reader can read it for you uh, the diploma and how and how the diploma will be uh, working out so that's something also that uh, the google uh, write it will be helping you in, in, in such a way and making it. it's going to be helpful in every way so if you don't want to read the whole thing you want to listen Instead of me, I spend, instead of me reading it to you, you have a you have a cool right that will be reading it for you and making sure that uh, well, uh, the thing that you're reading. If it doesn't help, then if you want to read it on your own too, that's an optional. But there's Google Write now, so in Google Docs before you guys didn't have Google Write, so that will be for homework for any message I'm gonna be sending. It will read it for you. So it's so, so that's something I really I put down for Google Doc. So you have that already in your Google Docs. So you make sure that you use you use that the Google Write and making sure that you use it and, and making sure that you take care of it as much as you can. Hopefully that really makes sense uh, uh, to everybody that, uh, like I said, uh, we are in a state of emergency and I'm calling on the school to shut down tomorrow on Friday, November the 27th, 2020, uh, because whatever, if you need a Chromebook, you need a, uh, any kind of device, it's very important that you make the time to get that device. So now we're going to be moving on to... Um, uh, today's lesson and I'm going to be reading today's lesson and what you need to do for today's lesson So today we're going to have our lesson that we have to do so um, the Assignment I don't need assignment. I want the lesson. So today we're going to be doing uh, the lesson for uh, for this assignment and uh, we will go through it so we make sure that you guys really understand what I'm talking about when I'm doing this uh, assignment so we will go through it right now so lesson one we're gonna be uh, going through looking back so that's the title it's gonna be talking about looking back so that's something that we are planning to talk about today and that's what's really important right um, so um, so I'm going to read the first paragraph so everybody can understand. We have a Google right here so you guys can use that when you are reading uh, the section 4 and unit 4. Also, uh, your unit exam, I pushed it to Tuesday, December the 1st, 2020, so you have your unit exam that day. So make sure that you make the time to study so you have that opportunity to, to be ready for Tuesday's exam. So lesson 1, looking back. Have you... Have you had some experience that you know you will remember for the rest of your life? You may have experienced something so significant that it became a turning point if in your life, causing you to change the way you think or act. Your memories of the past experience will accompany you, you your thoughts, your life, and they'll contribute insight and emotions to your future experience. So in this lesson, you will read several poems related to the to the theme of the memories and memorable experience. The first poem you will read is by Canadian poet Elizabeth uh, Brewster. Before you read it, think about the title: Where I come from? Where do you come from? How does how does where you lived influence you? Now read the poem. Do you agree with Elizabeth's statement that people are made uh, place? What images, smell, or sound are meaningful to you? Poets use imaginary to help the readers to imagine what they are describing. Imaginary is a descriptive language. It can enable you to, visual, to visualize something, but it can also appeal you to your sense of, of smell, hearing, taste, or touch. Imaginary can also appeal to the sense of emotions. So the first one we'll talk about in this poem, use contrasting imaginary to emphasize the difference between the city and the country. So the first one, quote five examples of imaginary that uh, a Brewster associates with cities. Now quote five examples of imaginary that Brewster recalls from her rural past. And number two, what is the Brewster's strongest memory of where she comes from? 
So it's very important that you guys make sure that you answer uh, uh, those two questions as much as you can and making sure that it's in complete sentence. And then you're going to compare your response. Many poets are as concerned with the sound of their poetry as they are with its theme, tone, and imaginary, although where I come from doesn't contain. So that's part of that too. And then we will move on to lesson two. So lesson two is talking about native voices. So Canada is a country with a diversity of ethnic groups and culture uh, customs. As a result, Canadians speak in many voices reflecting their different backgrounds and experience. These voices include the Aboriginal groups who lived here long before Europeans discovered the New World. In this lesson, you will look at three poems written by Aboriginal people, begin by reading The Spring of Youth on page 264 in the Between the Lines 12. So it's very important that you guys uh, read that too and making sure that you understand uh, when you're reading. The imaginary in this poem appeals to many of your sense. In your notebook or on your computer, construct a charter to identify as many Im images as you can that appeal to your sense of sight, sound, smell, and touch. Think about the title of the poem, then reread the last stanza. Why does the poet associate spring with youth? So that's something is very important. Maybe that's something you guys need to think about. Why is the author uh, associates uh, something with something else? And that's, uh, that's gonna make your mind uh, through reading to make sure that you understand what uh, the poet is talking about and what the rhythm is about. How does imaginary in this poem help you visualize the old women? So you're gonna have to give me an example about that too. So four, for each of the following two examples of figurative, uh, figurative language, identify the figurative of speech and what things are being compared. So number one, tears thunder down her wrinkled face. She knows it like the creases in her wrinkled uh, bent fingers. Number five, people often respond emotionally to others, disregard of something they value. Number one, what is the old woman fear about the younger generation? Number two, if you could talk with this old woman about her fear, what would you tell her? Compare, compare your response. The final poem that you will read in this lesson is Grandfather by Noel C. Austin. Uh, before you read this poem, do the following journey entry at least. Read the question in the journal uh, prompt. Uh, reading this question will help you prepare to the reading the poem. But you may wish to further explore your memories and what they mean to you by reading in your journal. So it's very important you go back. What memories do you have of your uh, grandparents or older relatives? What Im images comes to your mind when you think of them? Do you associate them with particular events? Are these memories pleasant? If some of your grandparents have died, what would you say to them? if you could speak to them today. So now read Noah Austin poem on page 374 in Between the Lines 12. Number six, what memories does the speaker have of his grandfather? Number seven, in this poem, the speaker talks on behalf of all grandchildren. How has the grandfather influenced his children, his grandchildren? Number eight, how would you describe the speaker's tone in this poem? In what ways has a relative or friend strongly influenced you? Think about the effect that this person has had in your life. Then write a poem honoring this. Okay, that was lesson uh, two. We didn't go to lesson three yet. Did we? Lesson three, the power of love. So lesson three is just talking about the power and the love of it. So make sure that uh, uh, you're paying attention uh, to these things. So lesson three, the power of love. I'm loving, have, your, have, have you ever said or thought these words when you think about love? Do you think of romantic dinners, 
flowers or love letters. Perhaps you associate love with poetry or music. After all, thousands of poems and songs have been written about the power of love, the pain of unrequired love, love is that isn't returned, or the end of a relationship. What song related to this topic can you think? Read the following lyrics in the same way you would read any other work of poetry. So I'm not going to bother reading the lyrics, but um, we'll move on. Number one, one of the reasons that song lyrics are up appealing is that they often contain sound devices such as rhyme, rhythm, and repeating words or phrases. What example of deliberate repeating can you see in these song lyrics? As in the poetry, recognizing the tone in the poem about love is important. Can you identify the tone used in each of the statement in the following activity? You are now about to read one of the most famous love poems written in the English language about Elizabeth Burnett Browning wrote in this sonnet in 1845. It was one in a series of love sonnet exchange between Elizabeth and poet Robert Browning, who were married in 1846. Think about the poet tone as you read the sonnet. So you always have to think about that. Um, number two, what is Barry Browning's purpose in writing this sonnet? What tone does she use to convey her message? Number three, to express their emotions, people sometimes find it easier to quote lines written by others rather than express their feelings in their own words. If you wanted to express your love for someone, which lines from this poem would you quote? And then compare your response. One's characters of a sonnet is that it has a regular rhythm. Poet who wants to create regular rhythm arrange the words in the line so that the stressed and unstressed syllables from a pattern. If you count the number of syllables in each line of sonnet, you will see that most lines have 10 syllables of which five are stressed. The rhythm used to sonnet is lambic and unstressed syllables followed by a stressed one. Thought you will find the occasional exceptions even in the poems with regular rhythm. In the following four lines, the stressed syllables are in bold text. So please read that too and making sure that you understand when you're doing the, the homework. Then lesson four, comparing and contrasting. In this lesson, you will bring together your understanding of a poetry by examining the similarities and differences of two poems. The poems you will be looking at are To a Daughter's Living Home by Linda Paston and By Departure by Glenn uh, Carnold. Before you read these poems, think about how you feel when you leave home or perhaps how you felt if you already left your home. Now turn to page 234 and 247 in between the lines 12 and read the two poems. So number one, Linda Paston poem is about a parent teaching an eight-year-old child to ride a bike. Why do you think that past entitled the poem to a daughter living home? Number two, what type of relationship do the speaker in departure have with his parents? Number three, copy this compress charter into your notebook or onto your computer, then complete the charter by analyzing the, char the characteristics of the two poems. Number one, study the information in your chart. What are the greatest similarities between these poems? Number two, what are the most noticeable difference between the poems? When you are uh, comparing two liter uh, literacy texts, brainstorm a list of things you will look for. Next, analyze each text carefully. Then think about their similarities and differences. Thinking about language. When you're writing about poetry or other literacy texts, you will often want to support your ideas by quoting words 
or phrases from the text. Incorporating quotation is one way of providing evidence for your argument. Generally, when you're quoting from a literacy text, you should observe uh, three rules. Be sure to quote the word exactly as the author has written them. If you want to leave some words out, use an ellipse. If you need to insert your own words to clarify the quotation, use brackets around your words. 2. Place quotation marks around words that you're copying. 3. Indicate the source of the quotation, for example, the author's name and the title of the text, either in your own words before the quotation or in the note after the quotation. So make sure that you have all these, make sure you have a bracket, make sure uh, you're writing, you writing them the way the author is writing it and making sure that you have good example when you're writing this. Don't just write anything, make sure that you have those or you're gonna lose marks if you don't uh, follow uh, these procedures. Uh, in some cases, you will want to incorporate a word or two from a poem into your own sentence. Here is an example of these type of quotation. The speaker in Robert Burns' poem, A Red Red Rose, uh, com compares his love to a sweetly played melody. At times, you, you may want to integrate a longer quotation into your sentence as in the following example. The speaker assures his love that he will love her until the rock melt we the sun. When you want to include a quotation longer than a line, it's usually best to introduce the quotation with a complete sentence. Notice in the following example that a colon is used at the end of the inductory sentence and an oblique mark is used to indicate the end of the poetic line. And in the conclusion, th this section has focused on poetry and its power to express emotions and simulate imagination. You compare poems that address the same subject and you saw how poets use imaginary and figurative language to convey their ideas. You also learn to recognize a variety of sound devices such as rhyme, rhythm, alliteration, rep repetition, and uh, automotopia. Many people feel intimidated by poetry because they can't always understand it easily, but poems shouldn't be regarded as puzzles to be solved. Instead, they should be thought of as pathway leading you to new insights into the world and the people in it. Ensure that you have submitted your section for assignment, including your audio, audio recording uh, illustration for this assessment. Um, so hopefully you guys understood your assignment for today. So make sure that uh, you get it done as soon as possible uh, because it's due today again at 4.30 p.m. Uh, mountain time. So make sure that uh, you get it done by that time and making sure that you hand it on time uh, because um, it's very important that you hand in your assignment on time. It counts really high, um, giving high mark on it. So you need to really make sure that you're serious about your mark and making sure that you want, really want to get a good mark. You have to put the time and you have to put the willing on it. I noticed that some people um, did not do their quiz. Um, uh, we have a unit exam that's going to be coming on Tuesday. So I'm giving you guys a day tomorrow to review uh, any assignment or assessment. Uh, tomorrow will be a day to review, so hopefully use tomorrow uh, really productively and use it uh, in a way that uh, you have that time and you have that time to study as much as you can so uh, you're prepared. Also make sure if you don't have a computer, you don't have an actual device for this course, you have to make sure that you come here uh, to the school and making sure that you pick up uh, the, 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 the laptop or pick up a computer so you have for the rest of the remaining course you have something to use and uh, uh, something that you can be using for for this course so if you're just using your phone that won't be good enough you need actual computer so you, you, you either you just have it today to uh, to um, to come if you do not if you're not able to come today uh, then I will uh, deliver it to you hopefully it will come by next week and it will take time for that computer to come you have to make sure that you return it 
uh, when you're done uh, uh, in January or in March because this course ends in March. So when you're done in March, you make sure that you return it and uh, you make sure that uh, you make the time to return it and bring it back here as much as you can. Um, uh, but if you can't come today, then you have to let me know in advance time that you uh, that I can deliver it for you, so you so you have the opportunity to come and pick it. If you can't come tomorrow. Tomorrow the school will be closed, so you're not gonna be able to come here and 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 pick up the the the, the, co the computer. I'm closing it a day early before uh, the government already started uh, decide to close it next week. But I'm closing it a day early because this is an emergency. This shouldn't be uh, something that. Uh, you're gonna make it right away uh, obligatory. It needs to be uh, shut down immediately. That's what it needs to do. And I'm shutting this place immediately. Even my myself not included anymore in this room tomorrow. So, uh, so this is safety, and this is uh, safety reasons. Um, like I said, it will go until February. So I'm saying this lockdown um, it will remain until February or March until I see the numbers are ten, are ten or five. If we see the numbers going 5 or 10, then we can open it again. But if we are in the 98 and 78, not good enough to open the school for me. Uh, the government can open all they want. My area, I'm not going to be able to open it until I see it's safe enough for the health of the, the safety of the people. Because at the end of the day, the people are responsible for, uh, the government is responsible for us. And I'm responsible for you guys as a teacher. So. Uh, people's health and safety really matters at the end of the day, and 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 just because the government uh, didn't do anything about it from the beginning, that does not mean uh, what they're doing is the right thing. Also, doing is not right. Is actually uh, putting us down in any way and putting us um, in a sinkhole in in a way that's really in a bad, uh, productive. Uh, uh, we are, we are, we are, we should be really embarrassed uh, because the whole country is looking at us now. Uh, and at the same time, uh, there's no nowhere in Canada has high cases than Alberta has. So Alberta has the the, the more cases than any other provinces has in Canada. So again, at the end of the day, it's very important that we have to protect ourselves as much as we can and making sure that we wear the mask and we take mask mandatory, right? Um, and like I said, you don't need to go out if you do not need to go out. Stay home as much as you can. Uh, your health and say your health is at risk now. If you go outside, you don't know if you're gonna come home with COVID. Uh, so it's, 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 it, we are we are outside. We're in danger. We're supposed to even be in a lockdown now. Not not uh, doing few restrictions and closing uh, certain restrictions. And those even those restrictions that the government announced. Uh, on Tuesday, those restrictions were not strong restrictions that we heard from the government, and we all know that those restrictions were not enough because it's only the schools are the only thing that we got out of this whole thing. That's the only thing I can say serious about that the government did. But other than schools, uh, we have still bars open, we still have worship places open, we still have um, cafeteria open, we still have uh, museums open, we have libraries open, we have theaters open. All these places are open and then at the end if the numbers don't go down and we shouldn't be surprised we shouldn't think schools just gonna make the numbers go down if we think that way um, we're never gonna get rid of covid because uh, that's not that's not the way how we're gonna do it like i said uh, for us to get the, the vaccine vaccine is gonna come in march right um, it's not gonna even gonna come in january because um because a lot of the whole world gonna get it starting january 20 2021 some countries are really going to be getting the vaccine. By the time it comes for us, we're going to be in March by that, or maybe even April. For us to come to Alberta, that's another story. It might come maybe by April, or might even come by May, or even by June, by the latest, because it needs to be distributed across the provinces too. But it to come to this province, we don't even know when it's going to come to this province, because first it has to go to Ontario, it has to go to uh, Quebec, all these other provinces first, right before it comes to us. And that's why I'm saying at the end of the day, um, our government did a good job by signing up with uh, Moderna and uh, Oxford uh, vaccine. Now we have two uh, vaccines that are, uh, that, are, that are ready and they are, they're, they're going to come. But like I said, for it to come to, um, to Alberta, that's another story. For it to come to Canada, we don't even know how long it's going to take. Our Prime Minister said either earlier by, by March, we might receive it to Canada. So that means by the time it comes to Alberta, it might even be in April or even by May, maybe by that time. So that's not something I can answer. This is a government question to answer. It's not me to answer. So everybody needs to know that 
these vaccines are very important and um, like I said, vaccine itself is not going to solve the problem. If we do not protect ourselves, everybody's just waiting for the vaccine, thinking the vaccine is going to be that great and it's going to solve the problem, right? Vaccines like cold flu medication. You take it, some people are going to die from it and some people are going to live from it. There's totally different kind of view of people here. So all it matters at the end of the day is people are going to die because of the vaccine and there's people that are going to live from the vaccine. So the vaccine is not going to help if we have huge numbers like what we have now. We need to reduce that numbers. And how we reduce that numbers is we close uh, the whole city. Calgary already yesterday, they, they, they called a local state of emergency. That's what Calgary did. And also... Um, Banff also called a local state of emergency. That means those two mayors of the uh, from Alberta, they called a state of emergency for for those two cities. Our mayor did not do that, and I'm surprised because uh, Don Iverson is a mayor that he cares about um, um, people's safety, people's health, and and I thought he's gonna be doing a lockdown, but maybe he's okay with uh, with. Uh, Jason Kenney's restrictions are not everybody's okay with what Jason Kenney said and what his restrictions are because it's not solid enough, it's not good enough, right? And we saw that. It's not good enough restrictions, it's not, it's not strong enough, and it's not good. And he said already, after three weeks, if the numbers keep rising, then uh, I, will, I, will, I will do more restrictions on that. And I don't know what those restrictions are. And I know in those three weeks, things are going to get worse because schools is not the problem here. School is part of the problem. It is. I agree. The school is part of the problem. But we have way worse problems than schools here. We have bars, we have casinos, and those areas are still open and they're still um, a problem. So, uh, like I said, I, I people dying every day now. And uh, in, back in March, we had like 323 uh, cases, people that died for death toll. Our death toll now is in the thousands. Uh, for Alberta, and that's and that's just scary when you look at the at the chart and, and and the COVID cases numbers. Numbers are increasing when it comes to death toll. When we were doing in March, our cases and our death toll were way better than what we're seeing now. Now every day people dying, whether you're old, whether you're young, and 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 really read the chart right. And uh, testing a lot, not a lot of people are doing testing. When I read the chart, few people are doing testing, and testing is very important because. If you don't test, you don't know if you're positive, you don't know if you're negative, and it's very important. If you have any kind of symptoms, this is where you need to go and, and get tested. Um, testing is really important to know if you if you were somebody who had COVID or somebody who did not have COVID. And a lot of people in our province did not do that. They did not go and, and call uh, 811 health link or, or all that. You, you can call that number if you have any kind of uh, COVID or or, 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 or or any kind of symptoms that you have you need to do. So see, people are not doing enough symptoms. People are not doing all that stuff. Of course, the numbers are going to be high because I did now doctors are complaining too, I heard, and they plan to close the whole hospital and the whole uh, places. There's enough already, uh, um, uh, like the doctors and, uh, and, uh, and the hospitals, they are getting cuts now because of the government. Uh, because of the, the, the what Jason Kenney uh, government did, they already have cuts, they don't have no budget, they have no money. There's more people that are sick now, but they're gonna have to close the hospital because if they're gonna have they're gonna have more than maybe a thousand people coming to hospital that have COVID and there's no lockdown, there's nothing. They cannot be forced to close the hospital and then people who are sick, they can't go anywhere. Again, that's 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 again that's uh, under our, our provincial government's uh, uh, problem and, and, and issues here. So again, uh, people's health and people's safety at the end of the day it really matters, and and everybody needs to take it seriously. Just because the government doesn't take it seriously, that does not mean we shouldn't take it seriously too. When we see something wrong, we're the one who has to pay point the finger and say this is not acceptable. We need to do, and that's what Nashi did. He didn't like what. Uh, uh, Jason Kenney said on Tuesday, so right away yesterday he called a local state of emergency. The same thing with the Bath mayor. He didn't like it either, he had to call the state of emergency immediately. So these are the kind of things that we need to make sure that we take care of as much as we can. Because we don't take our health seriously at any day, who else will take their health seriously? That's something that's very important that we need to understand and take it and not, and not joke around with it in any way as much as we can. Because Health and safety of the people is really important. It doesn't matter uh, uh, 
uh, what we do at the end of the day, we need to know our priorities at the end of the day. And a lot of people do not know their priorities. And it's very sad when you see those kind of people that don't know responsibility from wrong, from right. Because a lot of people don't know responsibility here. We need to know our responsibility. People need to wake up and realize how important this is, how important my health is. Because if you're putting everything first before your health, then 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 then, then, then that's sad for you. Then you're not gonna go anywhere because of this. So that's something I want you guys to think about, right? And and, and yes, it's, our world looks really bad now in every way. We don't have money. We don't have budget. We don't have economy. We don't have anything. And this guy he cares about his businesses so and not like we you know people when they care about the businesses when they have a good economy the country is good the province is good you have enough money but this pandemic already ruined our economy now on top of it he cares more about his businesses and his industries that's that's not even if he does that that's not going to stop and that's not going to make his businesses better or do anything because we're in a time of crisis your business are not going to run well in a time of crisis that's 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 for sure so might as well you be you care about the people's safety i would i suggest then caring about your loved one uh, caring about your businesses and your money because even if you lose money so what you can gain money again right you can get more money you can get more deficit you can get more stuff it's not end of the world uh, for you to 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 lose money to lose businesses it's not and i don't even see the big problem if i was rich and i had money i won't care about my business but my my people's safety is more important not money more important to me and he's and every day people are dying and he's caring more about his money that's 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 really bad really bad thing to do as a premier and that's what he did doug ford we have him in ontario too he's another premier that we have but he takes it way more seriously he takes him way more seriously so he's rich he has businesses but right away he closed toronto down he closed uh, york region down right away he did that and he did that last week that's the difference, and he's the same as Jason Kenney. No difference, but see, that's one knows how 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 much people's health is more important to them, and that's another person who doesn't know how much people's health is more important, because he knows that people's health is more important than 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 than, than people are dying every day, than his business is running and losing money. You know, so you have to know, like even the rich people, some of them they see what Jason Kenney is doing is bad. Not every them, not all of them agree with him. Because they know these lives that are dying every day. They know how COVID is serious. You know? And he made private healthcare. And our healthcare should be always public. Anybody who's sick can get it. Now nobody can get healthcare. Only people who are rich and have money, they can afford it. And hardly people are rich. The people that are poor, the people that are middle class. Those people can't afford it. Only the high class can afford it. You know? So I'm saying the time of not league we didn't have this issue, but the time of Jason Kenny we have this issue. So I'm saying in every way he, he's doing damage not just for himself, but he's doing damage for the for the province. The province is chaos now because um, even if he's that bad, um, the time of COVID this is the time we need to show the people how much you care, how much you care about their health, how much you care about their safety. That's what matters. Not what matters is. Is, is, is cutting health care, cutting, uh, uh, not doing lockdown, making everyday people dying a thousand. He's like acting this is normal. Everybody, they, everybody dies a day, thousand die a day. Before we used to just talk about hundreds. Now we're talking about thousands. And so we can talk about millions. That's how much a country people die a day. And we're not even a country. Imagine if we, um, imagine people die a million a day. And we're a very low population. We're supposed to just have a hundred maximum people dying, not not a thousand. I mean, that's why Ontario and the rest of the province are they're shocked because we have numbers that no other province has and we are low population. It's not like we we are like very high population like Ontario and Quebec and those provinces that are. We are way low population than all these provinces. And that's the fact. So the premier needs to take it seriously, he needs to wake up and realize the future because when it's too late, it's too late. When you can't fix something, you can't fix something. And now he's it's too late. Now he's, if he doesn't do lockdown now, things are going to get way worse. It's very hard to, to solve the problem because when you don't do, when, when things are really going bad and you don't deal with them right away and they get way worse, it's too late by that time to fix uh, the problem. You need to deal with it right away when there's a problem. And he did not do that. So he lost, he lost, uh, he, he, he failed badly in COVID. 
especially when all the mayors, if all the mayors in this province they close because of him, then that means this premier there's no responsibility he's taking as a premier. There's no even know what's the point even his rule for. Seriously, what's the point? Um, that's why I really actually closed yesterday. He didn't wait. He didn't even give today, or he didn't say next week we're gonna close the lock, we're gonna do the lock. So he did right away because he knows if he doesn't close immediately, more people are gonna die. Everything matters. The more people die every day, the more it gets scarier. Because this is health and safety. That's why I'm closing my school tomorrow too. Nobody's allowed to come here and to come. Although my school was open, yes, but it's only open for certain people. Like I'm allowed maybe five people, six people, I'm gonna allow. Yes, you, you were allowed to come today, yesterday, the day before, you were allowed. But now it's going to be full shutdown because your health and safety is way more important. And we're going to be going until February, even maybe until March. Because I don't think the numbers of Alberta is going to go any better. Now I can I can do the, the math here and it's not going to get any better because it's very late. And then uh, on top of it, our premier, you saw him, he didn't even close the areas that are pretty high risky like bars and casinos and theory, uh, theater and uh, museums and libraries. A lot of people are going to go there too now. So I'm just saying, we don't close, especially it's holiday now, a lot of people are going to gather together. They're going to go to bars, they're going to go. It's holiday. People are going to go anywhere. You can't stop people to, to go to bars or go to, to, to museums or go to libraries. You can't do that. But he did that. So I'm saying schools is not going to do anything by itself. Because the more you close, the more the numbers are going to go down. If you just close one area and you leave other areas open, still there's high risk people are going to go COVID. Because all these numbers that we're getting is not all from schools. A little bit are from schools, a little bit from uh, casinos, a little bit, majority actually are from bars and all these gathering stuff. Majority of those kids, and didn't close those. So that's why it's really bad. When you see a government like that not taking any responsibility, not addressing not, 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 not confronting people. He's gonna lose in every way. The doctors are mad at him. The teachers are mad at him. Everybody's mad at him. So I'm just saying, this government is sinking down every single day. So I'm just saying, that's why I'm taking a step early before the government does it. Because the government really announced it next week. Some schools are just gonna follow what the government said next week. But I'm gonna take my school. I'm gonna take a step er further and make sure that I close it tomorrow. So today, if you need to come, you come. Hopefully by 5, if you can make it by 5 o'clock today, then I will maybe deliver the computer for you tomorrow or something. And then tomorrow you don't come here at all. Until February or March. When things get better again, we can slowly open things slowly. We're not going to open at one time, so I'm going to allow 5 students to come. Maybe the first month, I'm going to allow maybe 5 students. That's the plan after COVID. How are we going to fix everything back the way it is and go back to normal life? We have to, even when, when we have a lockdown, everything starts opening soon when you, when the when the covid leaves so the same thing i'm not gonna now i close everything i'm not gonna open everything everything is gonna slowly open so i'm gonna allow five students maybe uh, three students four students then the less the number gets more then i'm gonna allow more students maybe 10 and then, then until we have actual number hopefully by the summer covid leaves i i'm hoping yes to covid leaves because it is um we want to go back to normal life and we want to enjoy the life the way it was before right but for that to happen, like I said, um, we're very far away before the vaccine to come, but we can't wait till the vaccine to come, right? So until the vaccine to come, we need to do our best by protecting ourselves and making sure that we care about our loved ones. Because every day people dying, more loved ones are dying. And that's the fact that we can see it every single day. Every day people dying, more loved ones are dying. You know how sad every day if you lose a family member, or if you lose a, you lose a, you lose a, a son or a daughter, or you lose a, anybody is is sad. Like I never did, but the people that that feel that way, and I feel sorry for those people. But see, that's what the government did. The government takes it. So this is a joke. People don't take it as a joke. That's the difference. People take it serious. Like that can happen to you. What you gonna do if if our premier lost a family member? She's gonna wait. I don't even think he's gonna wake up because of it. If he didn't wake up, he got COVID. You think he's gonna wake up if he loses a family member? He's not gonna take it seriously. Because these people are just rich, they have money, and they all they care about is their money at the end of the day, and they care about their belongings, and they care about uh, their stuff at the end of the day. That's what matters today, and that's what makes them live today. 
they're not thankful. Because if you're thankful, they have money, you will use it for good purposes. If you had free, if you had rich, that money should be used to create more jobs, to create more healthcare, to create more make make the province well. That's the money you need to use. But if you're using it for bad purpose, what you are appreciating for to have to have money to use it for for, for your businesses and, and your industries and you being selfish about it and showing up and making everything private. So people who are poor and the middle class can't afford going to doctors, they can't afford to go healthcare. It's crazy now part. We shouldn't even talk about the America if Canada itself we have issues here. But we're already, uh, we have a premier that doesn't listen and, and, and does cuts. It's the same as U.S. What is the difference between when we had Donald Trump and we had Jason Kenney? We had the same uh, amount and the same uh, problems and the same issues than, 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 than what Jason Kenney is doing. So it does not make any difference between having Jason Kenney and having, um, and having, uh, having that. So I'm just saying, we shouldn't talk about America here. Although, yes, now America, they have Joe Biden. They have, at least our country is going to go well. But our problem is we have two years of this failure uh, government. And we don't know in the next two years what damage they need to do. Really, when he came uh, the first year or the year before, last year he really did cuts in education. This year is cut, ducks, uh, cuts on doctors. And then now the COVID, he doesn't want to take it any seriously. And he really said from the beginning, he didn't want to do a lockdown. He didn't want. He said, Cat Albert will never go back to a full lockdown. So no matter what, he won't. And uh, you know what? He can say all he wants, but he knows that there's mayors that are, that are strong enough and they can close the whole city. You don't have no power even if you don't want to shut. There's other, like even now, the Calgary mayor, he was forced to shut the whole county. He's saying, I didn't want to do this, but he had to because this guy doesn't want to listen. He doesn't, they gave him chance. He didn't say anything. Because schools is not good enough. And the reason he closed schools, because maybe he realized schools is not going to affect his businesses. So he said, okay, we're going to close schools. But bars and all that, maybe he makes money out of those. Maybe he has businesses that work there. I don't know. Rich people that have businesses everywhere. And they're worried about their business. But the reason he did that, because he doesn't care. People, if they, they die, they be sick. Who cares? But more with what I care more. It's my business that I care more about it. That's what he sees and more important. That's why he's here every day. So health and safety people is more important for him. For him, he doesn't see health and safety people as that important. And you can see other premiers across the provinces, in Ontario, in Quebec, in 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 in, in, in BC, you know, especially BC is the best that government they have because that government takes everything seriously. They did a lockdown second time. All the other provinces did a lockdown second time. Can they realize how important it is? They know they know uh, people's health and safety how important it is. Except our government here doesn't know that. The other government too, they're willing to go lockdown they want. But they're not gonna do that because they, the already Prime Minister said this is only for the premiers to decide they want to go lockdown. But it's only our premier that's here not taking any right decisions, although other premiers are. So this is the difference. You know? Yeah, the conservatives, uh, for them to win federally or to win provincially, they lost because of uh, this premier. This premier, he damaged them federally, the conservatives, and he damaged, he damaged his own party, and he also damaged uh, people, people, so people don't elect him at all. Even Alberta, people are not going to elect him anymore. You know, because Albert is going really down now. You can see it. Like, there's not one thing good he did. The only thing we can say, yes, he closed the schools. That's it. But everything else he left open. He didn't, he didn't, he left the bars open. He left everything open. We are, we are in bad debt now. You know? So, um, school, he just did it because I think he didn't, didn't affect his business at school, right? So he didn't care. So, uh, and the schools, they're going to lose money too now because when they, they're off and, and, and they're not making money, the, the receptionists and all these people, they're not going to make money. So it's bad actually for the receptionists, not for the teachers, but they're certainly going to work there the whole time in school. They're not going to be able to work all next week. It's done. So I'm just saying, affect, but it won't affect teachers. My teachers still, they teach online, still going to make money. It's not going to be a problem, but I'm just saying it's going to affect other than that. So I'm saying at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter at the end of the day he didn't do much accomplishment in three weeks I, I don't think he may think he's going to go locked down though he said he's going to do new restrictions so the restrictions are not going to be good you might say we're going to maybe close um, 
more recreation centers, more parks. I think those those are the kind of restrictions he's gonna bring in three weeks. It's not gonna be a serious restriction. Because he doesn't wanna close other than important businesses like bars and all that, he's not gonna close bars because bars he's gonna make money out of and he needs that business to be run. So he's not gonna close it. Because always even if businesses yeah you want them to be running, they will run. After the COVID, trust me, the economy is gonna go back the way it is. Even if you're losing businesses, people can even rich people can gain businesses again. It's not a problem. When the time that we have a bad economy and the COVID made our economy bad, uh, don't 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 worry about uh, your business is gonna fail or going bad on. It's not gonna do anything. He doesn't even have money for pipeline. He doesn't have money for. I don't know how he's gonna make his business stronger. People are dying for people are dying every day for him is normal, but just I don't know. It's just it's just this government is going too much, too stretchy, and it's not making sense. And I'm happy that uh, these mayors they stepped up and they did the right thing because. Uh, we shouldn't just sit there and watch this. When we see something wrong, we need to know that people's lives every day matters. Right? We're not going to make the city open the more day because who knows if the, the, if, if the city is open and bars are open, everything open. Those numbers are not going to go down. There's not going to be any improvement by the time January comes. I'm telling you. And the premier knows himself. He knows if he leaves school closed, he knows there's not going to be no much improvement. He knows he has to do other research. He knows that. Because school itself is not not going to make all these numbers go down. It's not. Majority of those numbers are from hospitals. Hospitals are still open. Majority of those numbers are from from, from, from bars and casinos and all these. That, that's what it is. As long as people are gathering, doesn't matter if school, school, school is not a problem. School is just kids going to school. It's just affecting the kids. But the grown-ups are way more. The grown-ups are the more they, are, they, 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 they get uh, the COVID and they get they have to isolate those are the more it's not the, the, the schools is just maybe quarter of it or even half of it but the majority of it is from 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 from, um, from the other stuff so that's why I'm saying the restriction is not strong enough everybody can see this government didn't do enough search it just affected the students that's it and the teachers but it didn't affect anybody else did it no people can gather anywhere even if people don't gather at home they're gonna be gathering um and the reason he said people cannot gather at home because he didn't want to say people can gather in uh, bars or stuff because he wants those businesses to be open. So that's why now it makes sense to me why he said people need to gather at home because he knows people gathering that's not that's not business that's your home it's not gonna affect me in any way you know that's how he sees it this premier I know I'm not stupid right I know what he, what he's thinking because he he, he he when he says when he talk when he gives new surgery he knew what he's gonna say he knew what he's gonna close and why he's not gonna close he knew already. But the stuff he closed, we know that it's not going to make the numbers go down. Because it's just because you're going to gather at home, even if people see you at home. But if you're going to go to bars, you're going to go to casinos and, and, and libraries, and all these areas are going to go. That's not going to solve the problem. So people are just going to leave their home. They're going to say, Let, let's meet in casino, let's meet in libraries, let's meet in, um, let's meet in, uh, uh, in the theater, let's meet in the museum. They go there, they gather, and they get COVID. It's easy. No, it's not, it's not a problem. People just can leave their home and they can say, oh, he made it easy for me. I'm just going to have to leave the home and go there. You know, they didn't solve the problem at the end of the day. Even if the government comes to home and you say, maybe people, yes, we might not bring people at home anymore because that's not allowed. But if you go anywhere else, you're allowed. And trust me, when January comes, that's not going to solve the problem because the government knows that. that it's not, the government is not that stupid. They know what... What will happen after three weeks? They know. They, that's what they're the government. They know after three weeks what we, we maybe will not know all of us. Even I know, although I'm not the government, I know in three weeks that's not going to solve the problem. Because it's only school they closed fully. Even the worship places, they didn't close it fully. So people are allowed to go worship places. It's limited. One third, that means one quarter of it. That's it. Few people can go, but still, as long as things are open, even if you close a little bit of it, it's not that much. If it's half closed, half open, how good is that? They want it to be full closed. And that's why Calgary did that. They went full lockdown because the mayor didn't like it. He was shocked, actually. He said he was shocked more about the, the casinos being open and the bars being open because that disturbed him. He's saying it because doesn't all, everybody's thinking about this. It doesn't make sense. You're going to make people gather at home, but you're going to say yes to bars and yes to casinos, right? Enough anyways about this. We talked about it yesterday. We talked about it today. Um, but again doesn't matter what the government does it's very important we protect ourselves and like i said uh make sure that you do my homework tonight and we get it done today 
by 4 30 p.m and starting next tuesday we're going to be having our um unit exam for module one and module two so make sure over the long weekend that you have because we have we have uh we have saturday we have sunday we have monday we have three day long weekend you have to make sure that you put the time and study there's no another time to this you have to make sure you put the time and you study the weekend you have a long week i have a unit exam too on tuesday and i have to make the time in the weekend to study so you guys also make sure that you put the time in the weekend that long weekend and make sure you study all the words and making sure that you understand and take it all seriously in every way that's what your goal is right and tomorrow is just going to be a review day so we're just going to be reviewing the whole uh, first unit and second unit quickly and then the weekend you review and then when we come back after the pd day because pd day i have a meeting too i have to be there uh to 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 um um to um to prepare for for the online because uh we have to maybe clean the school and making sure that uh, it's closed because it will be closed tomorrow but tomorrow i teachers are allowed to come to the school and, and and visit it but students are not right students are not allowed to come to the school so that's what i'm saying if you're gonna come and pick up a computer or a laptop you just have today to do it at five o'clock starting by six um it's gonna close and it's not gonna open until february it all it depends if we get a vaccine by january in, in alberta and i highly doubt that will happen if it does then we will open school but if it's not it's not safe and our numbers super duper high by that time and vaccine comes no we're not going to open it because for me to open it i have to have at least 10 cases in alberta 10 cases in edmonton or five cases in edmonton then it's safe because i know that's with that much we have then schools but if i'm going to open it i'm going to be open maybe like five people can come and maybe it's just going to be weekends so well that this is a plan and and i will lay out more of the plan when we get to um uh, when we get to uh when our numbers get less but now our numbers are high even there's no even point talking about this because we will all forget about this and uh, I'm, I'm just but this is my plan when covid leaves and we have let's say five cases or six cases when the vaccine comes then we are just going to allow uh, weekends only to be open so school is going to be only open on saturdays and sundays only but weekdays is going to be closed and when we have zero cases then everything is going to go back the way it is we're going to be about 20 students 30 students the amount that we usually have but that will happen maybe by let's say i'm, I'm predicting maybe by late may or by maybe by june i'm hoping by that time we might have um we might have we might open the school fully maybe by june maybe the last month before the summer so we might open it by that time the summer it will be closed but hopefully by next september we will have normal classes everything's going to be we might not be even be in line online anymore right it won't be online uh, but i'll still make videos but it won't be online so i don't have to talk to you online so we're just going to be normal classes and we're just going to do things normally the way it is hopefully by next september who knows by next september if we still have covid um i can guess now next by next by next year by next year september we don't might not have covid but, but I'm, my projection is, is by the time we open fully, it will be either by April or by May, I'm hoping. That's when I'm actually going to open the whole school and maybe open it fully. By June, I'm sorry, by June, I'm opening it fully. By June, the last month before school. I know there's no point of that. It might as well be online if you want. You have choice because still it's part of the school year. So that'll be the last quarter of maybe the last month. Maybe, yeah, by the last quarter, by last month, I'm hoping by then. The COVID cases should be getting way better. We have the vaccine. Everything is well done and good. So hopefully by June, I'm hoping to open it again. But all we will see, all it depends if the COVID continues until June. And all depends if we get the vaccine or not. Hopefully that really answers your question as much as you can, okay? I hope everybody have a great day and see you on Friday.